psychology of success, and specifically how the way that you think, your habitual patterns of thinking, behaving, your mindset, your belief systems, and the emotional states you consistently live in profoundly influence whether you truly experience success and happiness. Now, the, way I say, the reason I say truly experience them is because they're not things, they're feelings. Success is a feeling, happiness is a feeling, fulfillment is a feeling. And so is disappointment and misery and despair and frustration. We choose the emotions that we live. Because most of us don't choose them consciously. So we're going to look at that. And we're going to use some really simple skills and tools today that if you apply them consistently, they can have a profound impact on whether you truly do feel happy and successful whether you do feel fulfilled, whether you do have a life of meaning, where you can look yourself in the mirror and acknowledge that actually, yes, you're proud of yourself. Because you should be. Every single one of you has unique gifts and talents and abilities. Some of you will already know what those are, some of you may not. But I guarantee every single one of you has something remarkable about them, possibly more than one thing. And sometimes that's a need to be significant, a need to have attention and stand out. Sometimes actually what that is is we need to feel connection with somebody else. We're just using different vehicles to meet that need. But whatever you choose to do, it is just that. It is a choice. So today you can choose to engage or not engage, and that's entirely up to you. If you do engage, if you do play full out, We'll have some fun today, okay? Then you are going to get so much more out of this. So this is not about me today. This is all about you. I'm not here because I like the sound of my own voice. I'm here because I've been where you're sitting. And who I was when I was your age was a very, very different person than the person I am now. And if I'd known what I know now, some of these skills and tools, I could have saved myself years of frustration and pain and not feeling enough and not feeling valued. So, when we're looking at this, there's a reason also that I'm here is actually you're in an environment that encourages you to be not just academically educated but to help you develop as people to help you develop your character, your leadership, your temperament, your personality. And some of the figures from history and from current times who've made a profound difference to the world. Mandela, JFK, Churchill. Who knows who that is bottom right, by the way? Malala, excellent. Does everybody know who she is? Any knows? Yeah? She's the uh, schoolgirl who was shot on a bus by the Taliban when she was a young teenager because she had the bottle, she had the courage to stand up and make a stand for the rights of women to be educated. And they tried to kill her. She's now a UN ambassador. There's a book out at the moment. I highly recommend. Extraordinary human being. And I'm not suggesting that all of you should be going out being a Malala or a Mandela or a JFK, but each of you has far more potential to influence and impact others than you currently may believe. So where are you right now when you look at that? Chances are it's going to be different depending on what you think about. So you may be much higher up that staircase in one area of your life. Maybe sports, maybe school, Maybe with the quality of, of connection you have with your family, with your friendships, who knows. But the chances are we're all at different stages, depending on what we're thinking about. And we go through that throughout our life. I've still got things that I'm only part way up the staircase. One of the key things is 
the first two steps you can get rid of very, very quickly if you change your mindset. Once you can't, well, if you won't do it, you're never going to do it. I'm telling yourself you can't, how many times have you said to yourself, oh, I can't do that? Everybody done here, is that, here done that maybe once, maybe more than once? So I guarantee you, if you're not nodding now, you lie about other stuff as well. We've all done it, because we're human. And it's self-hypnosis. If you say you can and you say you can't, you're right. You're never going to do it if you truly say to yourself that you can't. So right now, you've been through this experience when you came up from primary school up to secondary school. Now you're yeah, a pretty big fish in a pretty big pond. You're doing, uh, you choose your um, subjects this year, don't you? No? You chose them last year. Fantastic. I'm well behind there then. Excellent. So you've chosen your subjects. You're moving forwards. There's a lot of change going on. A lot of uncertainty there. Now, you are also growing up at a time where there's never been more pressure from outside on all of you. You're bombarded with images on social media, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, any of the other platforms that you use. Advertising, television, movies, peers, people you spend time with, about how you should look physically, how you should dress, what kind of music you should like, what's cool, what's uncool, what you should love, what you should hate, what you should think, what you should believe about other people, about different races and religions. And it's very easy to just take all of that on board unconsciously and suddenly realise that actually when you open your mouth to give an opinion, it's not your opinion at all. It's somebody else's that you've absorbed. And in doing so, what you, what you do is you give away your personal power, your ability to decide for yourselves who you are, what you stand for, what you believe, what's right, what's wrong, what's important. And that's so key, because every single one of you has that power to decide. And it's not dependent on anybody or anything else. And you have it inside you every single moment of every single day of your entire life. And you can access it any time you choose. But it is just that, it's a choice. And you can choose whether the actions that you take are for stronger, higher principles. They don't just serve you, but they serve other people. They have a higher purpose. Contribute to society. Help someone else. Contribute a happier, healthier, more productive person to the world. Because it's also true that we're all human. And we make mistakes. Lots of mistakes. It's how we learn. And sometimes the consequences of the actions that we take can be negative. We can cause pain, we can cause upset, we can cause hurt, distress to ourselves and to other people. And we don't necessarily mean to do it, most of the time we don't. But on those occasions, typically we've been acting for selfish reasons. So what I'm going to be giving you here is different ways of reminding yourself that you have a choice. You always have a choice. You have a choice about three things. Three decisions you make every single moment of every single day, and you're making them right now listening to me speak. And the first one is what you focus on. Now, I'm really appreciative of the, of the attention and, and how well everybody's doing this morning. Thank you so much for that. Focus is really good. Some of you will be focusing on the fact that your chair is not very comfortable, or the fact that you really wish you'd eaten something at break, or you ate too much at break or you're thinking about what's coming up this afternoon, or the movie you saw last week, or something else. Focus shifts around. So the first thing is what you focus on. The second thing, and this is critical to retaining your personal power, your sense of identity, is what meaning are you going to give it? Two people can have exactly the same experience and have a completely different experience in their own minds. If I go back to this picture. What do you see? What, how do you feel when you look at that picture 
can have some emotion. You know, how do you feel when you look at that? What do you think of? Sorry, dog. Yeah, can't argue with that. That's absolutely correct. There is a dog. How does it make you feel? Does anybody feel feel sad? Any, anybody feel feel ah? Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Anybody feel anything else? Happy? Yeah. So we all have a different experience of the same thing. And that's just a picture. When you go through the movie called Your Life, you're constantly giving things meanings. Most of the time without realizing it. So remember you can choose to give something a meaning, particularly if it's something that may be in the moment painful or upsetting or unpleasant. Because after that meaning has been given to something, after you've given something a meaning, you then decide what action you're going to take. Does the meaning you give something, is it the beginning or the end? Am I going to give up or push through? Am I going to take what they say and, and say, yes, that's me, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm nothing? Or am I going to say, actually, that's BS. That's their belief system. That's their belief system. Not mine. And the reason they're saying that's got nothing to do with me. It's all the stuff that's going on in their head. And their life. And very often, that behaviour comes from deep-seated insecurity. And a need for some sort of connection and significance. That they're not meeting. Or is not being met. And I'll come on later to talking about the different fears that tend to stop us. The two biggest fears that we all have as human beings is that we're not enough and we won't be loved. So, I've spent a lot of time already talking about how we feel. What are the decisions we take? Why is that? It's very simple. It's up there for you. Success is almost entirely down to our psychology. It's not the mechanics. You need a decent system, yeah? You need to be going in the right direction and have the right steps to take. But if your top two inches isn't working properly, if your mindset's wrong, if your psychology is wrong, it won't work. I'll give you a simple example. Think of a time, and it could be at school, it could be at home, it could be out with your friends, it could be playing sports, when you've known in a situation exactly what you should do, exactly when you should do it, how you should do it, and why you should do it, and you still didn't do it. What you did is you should all over yourself. I should do this, I should do that. And it doesn't happen. You don't do it. Why? You knew what to do. When to do it, how to do it, why to do it. You didn't do it. Why? It's a self thought Sometimes you can't be bothered. Yeah, absolutely. You haven't got a powerful enough why. Because you're tired. Yeah? Yeah? There are an infinite number of reasons. You could sit there and list a hundred for me and you'd be right. What we tend to do is not have a powerful enough reason for why we do things. So if you really want to achieve something, it's not about the how, it's about the why. You've got a powerful enough why, a powerful enough set of reasons for why you want to accomplish something, have something, be something, do something. You'll get there. The how takes care of itself. That turns up automatically. Once your brain has worked out, that is really important. If it's not that important, might happen, might not, but you're less likely to get there. So, we're going to do a little demo exercise just now on this. This is really quick, really simple. Um, it's going to be a bit easier for you guys because we've got a bit more space. So in a second, I'm going to get you all to stand up. And you're going to, I know it's hard, isn't it? Yeah? 
Oh my God, I could stand up. You're gonna. When I say you're gonna put your right arm in the air, I know this is my left arm, but I'm mirroring you for the pedants amongst you. Okay? And then you're gonna point in front of you, and then I'm gonna get you just with your feet still, because we've had a few people revolving like a bloody camper wheel, or a merry-go-round. Okay? We're just gonna turn with our feet in the spot, see how far behind you you can turn your finger. Now, here's the clue, here's the key to this. How you play games is how you play life. And this is entirely up to you. You can choose here to do this and, and get the experience and the understanding. Because I'm going to give you a simple process after that and you, you will see a massive difference in one minute. So you can choose to participate or you can choose to dick around. Okay, and it's entirely up to you. It doesn't bother me in the slightest. What you get out is what you put in though. And if you do that in this situation, chances are when it comes to something more important, you're going to do the same thing because we are our patterns of behavior. So everybody stand up. Just get yourself a little bit of space, because I don't want anybody poking themselves in the eye. So, just spread out a bit. Spread out a bit. That's it. Find a little bit of space. Right. Everybody, right hand in the air. That's the other right. Oh, here's, here's a little incentive for you. Uh, anybody who doesn't fully engage in this gets to come out front and help me one to one with an, an example later. Give you a bit of leverage. Right. Point in front of you. Okay. On three, just going to turn around and see how far around you can move. One, two, three, go. Yeah. So, here we go. Move forward a bit. There you go. Right. Stagger. I did one forward, one back. Keep your feet still. Move forward. Move forward. Keep your feet still. That's it. Right. Now that we've finished mucking around, one more time. If you couldn't turn all the way around because somebody's in the way, then employ that mighty intellect and just shift a little bit forwards and back so you've got a bit of space. Or sideways. Right. Okay, one more time. Arm in the air. Arm out front. And turn. Okay, and back again. Right. Arms down, close your eyes and Close your mouth. Okay? If only as a if you don't want to engage, if only as a curse to what he does. Okay? Close your eyes. This is a visualization. So picture yourself in exactly the same pose you just had. Arm out front of you. Now picture yourself turning easily and effortlessly round, but this time going a quarter turn further than you did just now. Okay, so just picture that in your mind. Quarter turn over and back again. Now do it again, but this time you go half a turn further. And again. Mouth closed. Thank you. Right, last time, again picturing it in your mind. You're going to turn all the way round. So your body turns all the way round so your arm comes right back to the front. Okay? Easily and effortlessly. And again, and again, and again. Right. For those of you who bothered to close your eyes, you can open them. Right. Take your arms out. Right arm in the air. Out in front. On three. Turn as far as you can. One, two, three, turn. Right, good. Everybody sit down. Okay. Button down. Who found that they turned significantly further afterwards? Yeah, yeah. Who didn't? 
Okay? So, the chances are that those people who did engage fully in the process. For those who didn't, sometimes it takes a few more times with a visualization, and sometimes it's the fact that you didn't have your own time, you weren't fully engaged, okay? But for those who did, that's the only thing we changed was what went in your mind. You have the same spine, you have the same arm, your feet are fixed, same as before, the only thing that changed was your psychology. That's how simple it is. And we spent a few seconds doing that. So imagine if you put that focus consistently on something you want to improve, and you see yourself already there. Here's a massive golden nugget for you. If, if you want to see, if you want to achieve your goal more rapidly, then tell your brain you've already got it. Because your brain cannot tell the difference between what's vividly imagined and what's real. That's why that exercise works. Because as far as your brain was concerned, oh, I've seen myself do it, I can do it. Your unconscious mind is very simple. It just believes everything you tell it, good or bad. And unfortunately, most of us have a tendency to tell ourselves some really nasty stuff. I wouldn't mind betting, that, and I would hold my hand up to say this is true of me as well from time to time. We sometimes say things to ourselves, about ourselves in our own head, that we would never say to another human being. Or if we did, there would be very negative consequences. But we tend to dump on ourselves. So we choose whether we're successful or not. We've already talked about most of this. In the moment, those three elements that I talked about, what you focus on, the meaning you give it, the action you take, that affects the decisions you make. And the decisions that you make are your destiny. Not everything else, not all the other stories about everything else that's happened when I was three or when I was seven or what happened this morning or what's going to happen next year. It's in our moments of decision that our destiny is forged. And we're making decisions every day. The question is, are those decisions positive, negative or neutral? Are they moving you towards who and what you want to be? Or are they not? Are they moving you away? Long term, two key things influence your decisions going forwards and the types of decisions you make. Number one is your blueprint, your map of the world, your belief system. Global beliefs. I am, you are, people are, men are, women are, life is. Of our identity beliefs about ourselves, some of which are our own and a lot of which have been downloaded from other people. We have our values, we have our rules. I mentioned earlier, rules massively affect how easy or difficult it is to feel successful. So if you do one thing, one thing only, make your rules for how you feel successful really simple. I go to a lot of personal development seminars, 15 years worth of them, typically running for anything between four and six days, 16, 17 hours a day. It's like a rock concert for 16 hours a day. Absolutely phenomenal. Best example I ever came across of a simple recipe for success is one guy at one of them who was the life of the party. He was amazing. He had boundless energy. He was always happy. He was always up. He was always engaged. So he was asked, are you successful? He said, absolutely I'm successful. I'm successful every day. He said, really? Why is that? And he said, it's really simple. Every morning when I wake up, if I can swing my legs out of bed, put them on the floor and stand up, I'm successful. I have another day on this planet, another day to make a difference. Sounds silly, but for him, that made a huge difference. The decisions he took because he felt successful all the time were very different from someone whose rules for success are incredibly hard to meet and therefore they feel frustrated, hurt, angry, depressed all the time because they can't be successful. Don't let anybody walk through their mind with your mind with their dirty feet. No one has the ability to make you feel inferior without your permission. 
So you can choose to wear people's words lightly, or you can choose to take them on and carry them around like a bunch of chains. So, formula for happiness. Very, very simple. LC means life conditions. How your life is right now. Now that's your life inside your mind as well as outside, physically. If you're happy, if you don't think that, that you will all have, even if you don't want to admit it right now, because it's not cool or because you just don't really want to be engaged at the moment, all of you have some area of your life that you're happy with. Now it can be a very specific Precise area, or it could be a general area, it doesn't matter. In that area, how your life is right now, or in those situations, matches or exceeds how you think it should be. Your blueprint, your beliefs in that area. It's really simple. That's all happiness is. It's a feeling. And that's all that needs to happen. Most people have a blueprint that's really blooming complicated for how to achieve these things. And they wonder why they don't feel happy more often. That's because the math is screwed up. It's complex. There are dead ends. Formula for unhappiness is even simpler. When your life conditions don't match your blueprint. When you're dissatisfied. When how things are for you is not how you think it should be. But there's a step beyond that, which is suffering. And again... You're at an age now where all of you will have experienced suffering at some point. There's the suffering of losing a loved one, or a pet, or a friendship, or physical pain of illness or injury. All sorts of different elements to that. When you're truly suffering, your life conditions definitely don't match your blueprint, your beliefs about how things should be. So there's one other crucial distinction which is that you feel powerless to change it. It feels like the pain is never going to end. Never going to end. And you don't have any control. And in that situation, you've got three choices to get out of suffering, or to attempt to get out of suffering. One of them does not work, which is blame. If you're suffering, if you're in pain, if you're, if you're really down, who do you blame? What do you blame? Yourself. Yep. Absolutely. Tend to go to that one last. What do you tend to blame before yourself? Okay. Sorry? Someone else. Someone else. Yes, I'm sure that's what's said over here as well. Thank you. Yeah, other people. It's not me, it's them. Because of what they did or didn't do. What they said or didn't say. And then there's one thing that happens before that, because other people can tell us we're wrong. Other computers, people can tell us we're full of it. But events can't. We can blame events. It's because of what happened last week. It's because of what happened when I was five. It's because of whatever it happens to be. Because events don't have a voice. So they're easy to blame. But eventually, you carry on in that spiral, you end up with blaming yourself. And that is a one-way ticket to misery. So you have two other choices I would highly recommend above blame. One is to change your life conditions. So make a change in your current situation, in what you're going to do, in how you're going to proceed, in the meaning that you've given this thing. And the other one is to change your blueprint, change your belief system. Change your rules for what has to happen for you to feel happy, for you to feel successful, for you to feel fulfilled. <coughs> Who saw the World Cup? Yeah? Who remembers the shootout? The shootout. Pen penalty shootout. Not the shootout of the OK Cross. Question. Did they succeed? Yes. They got to the semi-final. Yes. They finally won a penalty shootout. I am old enough to have sat through every penalty shootout we've lost in the last 25 years. And it's painful. It's really painful. At least in the semi-final we did not go out on penalties, thank God. But yes. Somebody else, several people said no. And you're right, because we didn't win the World Cup. So you are 
Whether you say yes or no, you're right according to your rule. According to what criteria you apply to that. So we can have the same experience, and some of us will say it's a success, and some will say it's a failure. Does anybody remember the Rio hockey? Yeah? No? If you missed it, check it out on YouTube. If you want a dramatic penalty shootout that we actually won, that's it. It was an extraordinary match. They came away with the gold medal. Our goalkeeper saved every single penalty that the Dutch took. Phenomenal performance. And the Dutch were on paper the best side of the world by a mile. And yet we came away with the gold medal. Sometimes success is very different. What's success for him? Yes. Yeah. To get money to buy food. Or a blanket. Sorry? Yeah. How much, yeah, to be encouraged. To have some human contact. He's sitting there on the pavement with his dog. Cold, hungry, and alone. Yes. Good question. Honestly, because people love dogs and they're more likely to give money. And when you're when you are that alone, when people walk past you like you don't exist, when they don't treat you like a human. Remember I said the two fundamental fears of all humans. We're not enough and we won't be loved. One of those, at least one of those two fundamental things, I'd say both of them are very real for that man. In that dog, he gets unconditional love. You don't have to do anything or be anything for your dog, as long as you're there and you have that bond. How about them? Syrian refugees, finally making sure. Success for them, not drowning. They're not all wearing life jackets, if you notice. And I would be willing to bet that there were more people than that attached to that little raft of rings when they started their journey. So sometimes we need a bit of perspective what success really is. And success is a thing. For them, it's being alive. Have their problems ended now? Have they reached or have they just begun? But you know what? They would consider those to be better quality problems than they had before. The problems are a sign of life. We've all got problems. You'll have problems for the rest of your lives. That's a positive bit of the talk. The key is not to have no problems. Who has no problems? Dead people. Dead people have no problems. If you're alive, you have problems. They are a sign of life. The key is to have better quality problems. Arrive at your problems in style. But don't try and think that you should never have any problems. That way lies endless frustration. Who recognizes this person? Yep, absolutely. Made some amazing films. He made some terrible films as well, but he made some brilliant films. Good Morning Vietnam, Mr. Doubtfire, Dead Poets Society, yeah, you name it. Loads of, loads of great films. Loved by millions. Incredibly successful by most standards, humanity. Yeah, absolutely. Um, very wealthy, he had a loving wife, he had a loving family, he had children. Where is he now? Yeah. Not just dead, but suicided. Suicided. He killed himself. Yeah. Why? Because his rules for success and fulfillment were so difficult to meet that he was trapped in suffering. 
he used drugs to try and get himself out of that, to meet those needs. But that's not sustainable. And he ended up being in so much pain, mentally, emotionally, that he couldn't see any other way out. So don't get too caught up with the idea that success is material. It's not. It's just feeling. And we've talked about this before. Fear is what stops us succeeding. Fear of failure, fear of success, fear of being judged, fear of being alone. And I said, fear that we're not enough and that we won't be loved. I've beaten this one to death with the others beforehand. What does fail stand for? First attempt in learning, or fifth attempt in learning, or 50th, or 500th, or 5,000th. Everybody, as far as I can tell, walked in here under their own steam on their own feet. I guarantee that you all fell over multiple times before you learned to walk. And not a single one of you had parents who on day one, as you kept trying to stand up and fall over, went, <coughs> clearly not a walker. Let's just have them crawl for the rest of their life. I'm not going to bother with that anymore. No. They persevered. You persevered until you could walk. Magic formula. Some things take longer than others. But don't be afraid to fail. It's far bigger failure never to try in the first place. Because in failing, we're inevitably trying something that's outside our comfort zone. That's where all growth is. That's where the juice of life, the excitement of life is outside your comfort zone. Yeah? Inside your comfort zone, you can already do it. That's alright, but it's not the same as taking on something new. Right. Now in the other talks, somebody usually volunteers themselves by now for this. Okay. Lisa's volunteering someone. Thank, thank you. But I've got to volunteer. But I appreciate you volunteering. Thank you. Oh yeah, man. What's your name? True. And right. This is very simple. It won't hurt at all. I promise. Um, it's been crafted well. So. If I get you to do nothing else today, I want you to get rid of this word from your vocabulary. Don't try. The word try. So. To illustrate why it's meaningless to try and do something. Could you put pick the try and pick the chair up for me? No, you see, pick the chair up. So no, try and pick the chair up. Try and pick the chair up. No, now you put the chair down. You're not picking the chair up. So try and pick the chair up. No, no you pick the chair up again. So try and pick the chair up. No, now you're not picking the chair up. Do you get it? You see, thank you. Thank you. Do you see what? That's it. It's as simple as that. There is, as Master Yoda said, there is no try. Try not do or not do. There is no try. Yeah? Either you do something or you don't do it. As soon as you say, oh, I'll try and do it, what you're doing is giving yourself permission to do it in a half assed fashion. You're not fully committed. So if you, if you choose not to do something, fine. Say you're not going to do it, but if you're going to do it, do it. Yeah? Just do it. Don't muck around on the edges saying, no, I kind of made it. Yeah? You can do that if you want, but it's disappointing and your results will be poor. And poor results mean pain. Success comes from giving it your all from making it part of your identity. And I've already talked about, excuse me, I've already talked about some of this already. Having a clear goal, a clear outcome. Yeah? Being specific about what you want and why you want it. That's the fuel that will get you there. When you set a goal, when you set an outcome, when you decide you want to do something, the other thing to do is take immediate action before you leave the site of setting the goal. Because at that point, when you first get the idea to do something, is it kind of exciting that you really want to do? There's an energy with it, yeah? It's exciting. It's, 
It's energizing. Use the energy. Make a decision and take the first step then. Give yourself momentum. And then for crying out loud, make sure you know what you're getting. Measure it. And change your approach if you need to, if it's not working. Because if you run these looking for a sunset, it doesn't matter how committed you are, how enthusiastic you are, it's never going to happen. And if the approach you're using doesn't work, the definition of insanity is to keep on doing it but harder and hoping it's somehow miraculously going to make a different result. Yeah? You need to change your approach. How often should you change your approach? Bingo. As many times as it takes to get your outcome. In Edison's case, 10,000. Yeah? Hopefully, what you go for is not going to take that many goes. So when you're creating an extraordinary life, I want you right now to think of one thing, one thing. It can be a big thing or a small thing. It could be, uh, could be uh, health, it could be uh, wellness, it can be school, it can be sports, it can be family, it can be anything. Something that you absolutely want. That if you have that in your life, whether it's now, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, 10 years time, 20 years time, Life would be extraordinary for you. And it doesn't have to be a huge thing, but something that's really compelling. And I want you to hold that in your mind whilst you're watching this. Feel the feelings of what it would feel like to have that in your life. Inspiration. It starts as a distant rumble resonating through every fiber of your being. Slowly, escalating until it ignites a fire in your belly that consumes you with an overwhelming sense of possibility. You eagerly embrace the journey because you care not about what you are, only about what you can be. Then, suddenly, you find yourself there, where the crowd should have been cheering, yet so much of the mountain still moves. Your muscles ache instead of sweet glory, you just taste the salt of your sweat. The fire in your belly, replaced by the burning in your lungs. The battles you've won, dwarfed by the war ahead. You could give up at that moment without judgment being passed, knowing you have done well, better than most, or you can take a moment, breathe deeply, wipe the sweat from your brow, and make the choice to take the next step. This moment, the moment when the effort still needed to achieve the goal becomes it. The moment when the pain becomes a reward. When your face, marred by sweat and dust and blood, can still muster a determined grin despite the seeming impossibility of war. This moment is the moment when greatness.
How do you feel? Alright? Tired, hungry? It's alright. Thank you so much for your attention. I'm going to leave you with one final thought before you head off for lunch. And that is this. Everything that we've talked about today has been around reminding you that it is your choice how your life goes. Your destiny is entirely in your own hands if you choose to grasp it. Because I firmly believe that life is exactly what you make it. So as you walk out of here and go into the rest of your life, I challenge you to make it magnificent. Make your life outstanding. Be the person that you can be. Be everything you can be. And never be afraid to do that. Thank you very much.
came here, I thought, I can't queue jump, that's terribly wrong. And then they all queue jumped in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>